Welcome to Clark County Today. I'm your host, David Medor. Today we have Chris Gerard. He's the owner, CEO, president, founder, chief bottle washer of uh, Plaid Pantry. Not the founder. I'm not old enough for that. <laughs> okay. It's been around a while. Well, welcome. Uh, Chris, you're, you are, you've been involved with the, C, the CRC project, what I call the light rail crossing project for some time. Tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, my background is, uh, my degree is actually in engineering, and I was in the Navy for seven years. What, what branch of engineering? Uh, aerospace. Aerospace engineering, okay. Right. And uh, after the Navy, I decided to go back into my uh, college, pre-college career of uh, working for convenience stores. So I worked for 7-Eleven for a number of years, various other companies. And I came out to Plaid Pantry in 1989, so I've been here 22 years. And when you came out, you came out as an employee? I did. I uh, was chief operating officer and then shortly thereafter was uh, moved to CEO and president. Great. And you said it was 89 when you, you started. When did you switch to CEO and president? It was 91. So about 10 years ago today, or 10 years ago this year. 20. 20 years ago. Oh, yeah, math. <laughs> 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 That's right, not 2001, 2011, great. Right. So 20 years, and is mainly, have you been in this area, the Portland, Vancouver Most area? of our company is right here in the uh, Tri-County and Vancouver metro area. And how many stores are there? We have 105 stores. That's a lot of uh, stores. How do you keep track of them all? Well, with really good people. Which is the key to any good business. It, it is. We have 750 employees. Um, wow. A lot of them very long-term employees. We have a full benefits package, uh, including health insurance. That's great. For all of them. So you, do, you take good care of your people, otherwise they wouldn't be sticking around. There's a good business reason to do that. Yes. Uh, we just finished a record year in a good way. Really? And in I, this economy? In this economy. Good for you. You must be yeah. doing something right. How, what do you attribute that to? Uh, it's, it's really great people. We're uh, really blessed to have the folks that we have, some 20, 30 year employees. And, that is uh, great. So you must give them respect, allow people to believe in what they're doing, make sure that they know that they're cared for. You appreciate them. We do that. Very good. Yes. So how many, in the, how many people do you employ in the Portland, Vancouver area? It's uh, 750 Oh, they're total. all in this area. Right. It's, uh, wow. We've got a couple of stores in Seattle, which are important to us and uh, Salem, but the bulk of our company is right here in uh, Portland, Vancouver metro area. So you must have trucks that go back and forth across the bridge and deli making deliveries and what, what, what kind of transportation local truck or freight do you move? Well, our uh, main supplier is Cormark International, which is out of Milwaukee, um, and they don't cross many bridges to get to most of our stores. And it's like, you have like once a day kind of deliveries, you know, so it's not a lot of traffic that you go on. You're not going back and forth across the bridge on a, on a very frequent basis, it sounds like. Right, right. W what got you involved in the CRC project? Well, right at about a year ago, uh, one of our landlords called and said, it looks like the bridge project is uh, kicking up and it may affect your Vancouver store. And uh, I went over to meet with the CRC to look at that and it was interesting when I first went in there, the maps went, you've been there, I'm sure, all around the wall. You're talking about the, the, wall. the downtown Vancouver? Right. And it was then that I realized how really big this project is because it affects, as you know, seven interchanges and the river crossing as well. Right. Everybody that is promoting the project has been calling it a five miles but if you actually zoom in on the area with, uh, using Google Earth, it's actually three and a half miles. It's not, I don't know where they get the, uh, one, the extra one and a half miles, but right. it's, it's really a three and a half mile project. Yes. Um, so when I looked at that, I realized it was going to affect um, our Hayden Island store as well and our Marine Drive store. Um, but the more I dug into it, and it was really the tolls that caught my eye. Um, I realized that the financial plan for this uh, had a lot of questions. Okay. And it, it's interesting when I first um, 
was looking at the meetings, we can look at how much Oregon is uh, supposed to contribute to this, how much is going to be federal money, and then there's the toll money that uh, we were going to borrow $1.5 billion. And being in my business, I pay attention to traffic on roads, and I can do some pretty basic math. And I was multiplying the toll rate by what I knew to be 130,000 cars, vehicles. Each way. Yeah, and I kept coming up with $6 billion. And I'm thinking, what's wrong with my math? I mean, we're borrowing supposedly $1.5 billion. Why am I coming up with $6 billion? And so I tried to get information, but there was a tolling study, but I couldn't get any real numbers to figure out what was going on. So I was Googling around, and I found a, an economist who had done some work on this in 2008. And it looked like he had a lot more data than I was able to get on the project. You're speaking of Joe Courtright? Joe Courtright, mm -hmm. right. And <clears throat> so I um, looked up Joe, and I think most people know I financed his updating of his project. I thought it was something important to do. So you were committed to find out the straight scoop from this. You would think that you'd be able to get those kind of answers from the people that are promoting this. That are you, you would think so, but it took a formal public records request to get their finance plan and the document they call the funding contribution report to figure out this flow of money, which is where this graph comes from. You want to talk about this graph? I will. Okay. So, um, by the way, anything that we're talking about today mm -hmm. uh, isn't my opinion. Uh, it's not really Joe Courtright's opinion. What, what I'm going to stick to is what the governor's own independent review panel said. So these are CRC documents? CRC documents, the independent re review panel documents and comments. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the independent review panel hired by the governors to, for oversight on their own project mm -hmm. um, came up with 25 findings and 30 specific recommendations. The CRC refers to this as a roadmap. Uh, if you really read what the IRP said, mm -hmm. it's more of an obstacle course. Okay. You go over here and you better do this and you better do that. So I focused. Why don't you show us what, so we can understand what, what are we looking at here? Well, I'm I'm setting this up because okay. out of the 30 recommendations, I I was most curious about the financing, and so I focused in on that. Mm -hmm. And from the CRC documents, I generated. This is my graph, but it's generated from their numbers, mm -hmm. and it shows from today over to here uh, the contribution that's expected to come from Oregon in the yellow, Washington in the green, federal funding from the Federal Transit Authority for the light rail, mm -hmm. federal discretionary highway funds. Here's the toll bond debt. And there's another slice of debt on top of that called interim financing. And what the IRP and the CRC themselves acknowledge in some areas mm -hmm. is that there are very serious challenges with every one of these sources of funding. Mm. I, I call this a mountain of debt and mm. wishful thinking. Mm. Um, I'm just going to zoom through these and if you have okay. any questions we can. Uh, Oregon legislature is the one that writes the checks. They don't know how we're going to pay for this. We in Washington both have uh, budget challenges. Mm -hmm. CRC's plan is to raise gasoline tax, raise motor carrier fees and taxes, and vehicle registration fees. Really, wait, I haven't, I haven't heard that. The not only, many people have. The only most uh, of the legislators have not. They're hearing it now from this report. Is that so? That's in in the uh, CCR do, CRC documents. It says these it are is. the sources of funds. Right, and because the only source of the funds they're talking about that, uh, for us on this side of the river here in Vancouver 
is a operation and maintenance uh, fund that is supposed to be raising our sales tax. So that's just one more tax here. Right, and I've not paid honestly that much attention to Vancouver. We've mm -hmm. got our hands full in Oregon. So this certainly affects both sides of the river here. It does. Now, uh, raising those taxes isn't enough, so the CRC plan uh, is to, kind of like the tolls, use that cash flow stream, dedicate it just to this five mile or three mile stretch of road, mm -hmm. and then go to the bond market and borrow $500 million. So mm -hmm. the very base beginning here is a big pile of debt for the mm -hmm. state of Oregon. And by the way, our treasurer has said that uh, our debt capacity is, I think his term was scarce. Mm -hmm. I've talked to people who would care about the gasoline tax and vehicle registration fees and motor carrier fees and taxes, mm -hmm. and they kind of say like you did, my, I didn't know that, I don't know if we can support that. Mm. So my position is, I think it's time for the legislators to understand how this works and how we're gonna afford this. The same is true for Washington. Washington has its own budget challenges. Mm -hmm. In fact, you and Washington have just passed your multi-year transportation appropriations bill and there's no money in it for the CRC construction. Hmm. Now there is money to analyze a public-private partnership, which means you go out and find someone to make the investment, mm -hmm. collect the tolls, make a return on their investment, which tells me that Washington doesn't have ready funds to put into this project either. Going on up, federal transit, so-called new start funds, mm -hmm. This is, according to the Independent Review Panel, um, a pretty tenuous possibility. These are funds that are competed for nationwide, and the IRP says your rating is a medium, and by the way, there are some things that you need to work on because it looks like your rating might be a medium low and you're not gonna get this money. Huh. Chris, we, we're running up to our 15 minute break, so we got break and continue here in a moment. Okay. And uh, so we'll come right back.